constraints through the advanced tab. The final uh, option which I just want to demonstrate is how to review the task dependencies. Um, by default, you might want to look at the dependencies on your right hand side, though it gives you the arrows and how these activities are connected. Uh, this might not be giving you more like a flowchart kind of mechanism. So this is when you might want to make use of the new view called network diagram. So I'm on my task ribbon. I'm clicking on my view data group where I change my current view to network diagram. On my network diagram, you can see um, my activities are represented by different shapes. The parallelograms represent the summary activities and you can see the rectangles represent my normal activities and my milestones are represented by polygons. So as you can see, depending on what view you are currently looking at, the format ribbon will change. So in this example, I'm not focused on my summary activities because I just want to understand the flow of events in my project. So I can say, um, hide all the summary activities and I just want to um, collapse the boxes, which means I just wanted to take a look at only the high level data. But since you don't have uh, details about these activities, you might want to split this window into two parts. I'll go to the view ribbon where I can click on details and as I select each activity on the top, you can see the activity name, its information and its predecessors at the bottom. So this might be a quite easy way by which you can review the dependencies. But if you don't want to go to a network diagram, rather I want to make use of the Gantt chart along with something like a network diagram, you can do a window split, go to the view ribbon and click on details. On my bottom, instead of using the task form, I recommend you make use of what we call as a relationship diagram. So I just go to the more views here where you just change the view to relationship diagram. So the relationship diagram is more like a subset of your uh, network diagram, but the only focus is it gives you only the immediate predecessor and the immediate successor of the task what you're selecting on the Gantt chart. So I have selected um, conduct workshop. It gives me only the identified stakeholders, its predecessor and its successor review findings. Okay, so this is what uh, are the different views what you might ideally want to look at if you want to analyze your dependencies. So just to summarize, uh, as you know, work breakdown structure is a deliverable oriented uh, tree structure. Next is to make sure that uh, you decide whether your task mode needs to be auto or manual depending on whether you want the dates to be calculated or not. Third, there are different types of tasks you can create like normal, summary, milestones and recurring activities and there are different ways by which you can create these activities also. We talked about dependencies uh, where we said it can be finish to start, start to start, finish to finish and start to finish dependencies where which, uh, you can try to make use of uh, the task information form or the drag and drop option to set your dependencies. If you want to have a lag time or an acceleration time between any two linked activities, make use of the lag field at the predecessors tab to set those dependencies. And finally, we talked about constraints when you have some external dependencies or deliverables uh, which cannot start as soon as possible. Okay, so this is the upcoming series. So next week, session four, this is when we are going to talk about how to set up resources like people, cost, and material as a part of your project 2010. And uh, we'll have a focused Q&A session on 18th October. So if any of you have any questions on Project 2010 or its earlier versions, please check the website so that you can